so basically you know i'll be speaking on uh, uh, scaphoelunate dissociation so this is the one case example where i had this 19 year old male he was a resident of usa studying yoga in haridwar he kept on complaining of pain and rest while putting weight or extreme movement for last 4 to 5 months he went to different uh, orthopedic surgeons so this was the x ray which was done looks quite normal in x ray and he was missed given some uh, painkillers and rest and everything so what actually went wrong that proper examination was not done so in any case proper examination is very important in any case so on examination what i found was there was a tenderness dorsally over radio carpal joint and there was a slight sound of shift on pressing over the anatomical snap box so i got there is something wrong over there with the scaphoid so i came up with some differential diagnosis that it could be a fracture or subluxation or avascular necrosis of some bone probably a scaphoid or it could be a ligament injury tear or it could be tendinopathy which is causing this kind of problem pain or uh, this problem so i again looked back this x ray and found that this ap x ray is not a true ap x ray actually and this is not a true lateral x ray so the lesson number 2 with this is that you need to get a proper x ray done so as soon as you get a proper ap done you start looking this there is something wrong so this is the proper ap and proper lateral x ray done and this similar kind of finding could have been confirmed by this MRI which confirms so after seeing something wrong on x-ray you presume a diagnosis and to confirm you get further either CT and MRI and you get this confirmed. So before jumping on to diagnosis of this a bit of anatomy and kinematics about the wrist we all know there is an proximal row there is a distal row and this makes certain arc there is a first arc second concave arc third arc and this needed to be maintained if you look at the AP X-ray. And if you try to understand the kinematics of uh, actually wrist, the capitate is the center of rotation and lunate is in a dynamic state where trichoretral usually goes into extension in rest movement and uh, scaphoid goes into flexion. And if you see the force of transmission, it is from capitate lunate scaphoid to 25% of force is transmitted to ulna and 75 to the radius. So basically lunate is the center of attraction. It is in a dynamic balance with the scaphoid and trichoretral. And here lies the problem if anything goes wrong in the scaphoid, lunate or trichoretral. So this is what I told actually. So if you see the lateral x-ray, what you find is that usually the excess of the lunate capitate and the second metacarpal and radius is uh, one side and if you look at the excess of the uh, scaphoid it makes 45 degree of angle with this uh, with the capital lunate uh, axis and if there is any wrong with the scapholunate ligament what happens the scaphoid flexes and lunate extend or dorsiflex and there is an increase in scapholunate angle, which is about 105. So anything beyond 60 is abnormal. On the other side, when you have an opposite thing that is volar intercalated segmental disability, it is the scaphoid which get extended and lunate flexes in and scapholunate uh, angle get decreased below 30 degree. And that's an abnormal and you call it VC or volar intercalated segment instability. So now look at this x-ray what we find that on an AP radiograph there is a gap between scapholunate that's typical of terithermo sign. Then you have a cortical ring sign and this can be again confirmed on this. And if you look at the lateral view you could draw all these lines and see and you find the scaphoelunate axis is more than 60. So a typical scaphoelunate uh, tear, ligament tear is basically it can present with an occult, occult or a dynamic scaphoelunate dissociation and then lead to corporal collapse and then ultimately leads to slack. So this is how the progression of disease actually happens. 
So if you classify them, that could be dissociative, non-dissociative, complex, and adaptive. In fact, if you see all this classification, it itself is complex and difficult to understand. But the basic thing is a scaffoldate angle, which you needs to understand. And if you see, there is in a scaffoldate instability, it is the complete disruption of a scaffoldate ligament. Scaphoid flexes, lunate and triquetrum rotate into extension, and this is a typical dorsal intercalated uh, um, uh, segment instability. So, how you actually uh, classify these uh, carpal instability that this could be dynamic, because you can have a negative X-ray and positive on straightness thing. You could have an static. If you will find it on every plane film. it could be degenerative or it could be secondary where you can have ultimately lunate avascular necrosis also so how to treat this you can have a direct open repair with kvr fixation for the fresh for the degenerative or for later presentation you have brunelis brunelis and many modifications of brunelis or you could have three ligament tenodesis or you can have a bread capsulodesis what i am going to show you in this video is i'll just shift it not take the video on this i'll shift it to video directly what i am going to show you on this video is actually a modification of brunelli brunelli so this is the dorsal dorsally we opened the same way that has been told just about a 3 cm on this and you straight away reach to the uh, extensor retinaculum you cut it between the second third compartment and here you need to careful you could see this extensor carpi radialis here and you retract it laterally and try to locate the joint line we are not Now, able to see let me tell you in a chronic uh, sl instability the tissues are very tough and it is very difficult actually to demarcate and in fact cut those fibrous tissue so you keep Hello, sir. Palpin. we are not able to see the video the video is not running could you please check oh uh, it's running on my this thing no uh, anup yeah i think you should run it separately okay okay it's no, not no, running no. here happy okay so can you yes. see the video now yeah make it in presentation mode and now it will run you have to click here on the play is it is it resume share okay 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 let me do this sorry i think what's happening is is this visible uh, it is visible make it in share uh, presentation mode then it will run presentation mode yeah yeah from this slide only yes And now click on the video left side here, uh, arrow. Okay, yes, it's running. Yes. Visible now. Yes, done. I'm so sorry for that. So this is on the dorsal aspect. We're cutting the retinaculum in the second third compartment. Now, as soon as you cut, you get to the capsule. so this you have cut the reticulum you have retracted the extensor carpi radialis and now this is the area where all the tissues are very tough so you have to be very very careful once you are cutting on to this side so you try to locate and then cut the tissue so what i'm trying to make is trying to cut the superficial tissue and as soon as i reach i try to have the capsule and fibrous tissue and try to make a flap of it actually and now you have reached and you are immediately able to see the scapulonate dis, uh, uh, dislocation and now i've shifted on to the volar side and make a small incision 2 cm on the volar side 
and this is fcr which you can see retract it laterally and then you cut the capsule after locating it now this finger is at the distal aspect of the radius distal border of the radius and all this tissue is very difficult to cut because it's all fibrosis and capsulodesis which has happened in on this and now i am trying to open up the fcr to harvest the part of it for tendon reconstruction this now again i have shifted on to the dorsal aspect and so typical movement which you do you put one k wire into this scaphoid and one k wire into lunate so one k wire has been put into lunate another will be put into the axis of the scaphoid and this is how you move it and this location is reduced when you pass k wire from scaphoid to lunate to fix this dissociation and you cross check it now again i have come on to the volar aspect after uh, fixing the dissociated scapulonate so you have to clear up all this soft tissue this wire is at the distal edge of the radius that's the radial uh, joint wrist joint and now i am making a point to drill a hole into scaphoid for passing the ligament passing the tendon so basically you have to make two holes one into the scaphoid and another into the lunate and you need to be careful that you don't fracture now this is how from proximal to distal you harvest the part of fcr which is about 3 to 4 mm and completely do it till the base of the second metacarpal where it is attached now i'm trying to stitch the end of it so that i can pass this harvested tendon through the holes made in scaphoid and lunate so this is now i passed it from scaphoid coming on to the dorsal side and this is the actually most difficult part because your hole is approximately 3 mm i do it with the 3 mm k wire and sometime it becomes difficult actually to pass that so oh, i think is this what happened some there's something wrong it's a replay i'm so sorry this was where we were we were trying to pass the ligament so we have come on to the dorsal aspect trying to pull it back
now from dorsal aspect it has come out of from scaphoid and i'll now pass it through the lunate this is what i'm trying to pass it through the hole in lunate and once i pass it i bring it on the volar aspect and this is a one hole yeah. this is a hole which has been uh, made uh, into the distal edge of uh, radius the k wire uh, which you can see and uh, it is being uh, so this is the end of tendon which has come and it is now fixed sutured it back to itself okay so this completes the surgery this is the post op x ray of the patient this is the post op movement this is approximately 3 months which is the movement of the patient Thank mm -hmm. you.